Hey guys, I'm Adam. I'm Ryan. And this is Two Neighbors. Ryan, what do we got going on today? All right guys, so we got a special request and this is from Michael Burns 07777. Um, he put hashtag my request down below along with the link to this video and it is Tom Brokaw explains Canada to Americans. I'm Tom so, Brokaw. <laughs> yeah, Tom Brokaw explains Canada to Americans. Um, so you're going to get the Canadian reacting to Tom Brokaw explaining Canada to Americans. I'm interested to see what he has to say. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how old this is, but uh, we're about to find out. But before we do, Guys, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel of Two Neighbors. It really does help us. And don't forget to turn on that bell for notifications because we post every single day. Uh, and check out OKSwag.com. Punch in Two Neighbors in the coupon code at checkout and you'll receive 20% off plus free shipping and pay no tax on some sweet Canadian swag as you see down below. Uh, now shipping to Canada and the USA. Rock and roll. So without further ado, Michael Burns, thank you very much for your my request and let's check out again Tom Brokaw explains Canada to Americans. This is the Peace Arch standing near the westernmost edge of the US Canadian border, 30 miles south of the Olympic City between Blaine and Washington State and Surrey, British Columbia. This was dedicated in 1921 to commemorate the treaty that ended the war of 1812 between the US and Great Britain. Remember, Canada was a British colony. That was a long time ago, but the inscription on the arch sums up the relationship. May these gates never be closed. Except for during COVID, more apparently. Than law order, of course. No doubt of mine can divide our joint stewardship of a treasure of natural riches. A treasure of natural riches. <laughs> and back again. Shorelines, wild rivers, and great lakes, vast forests and grasslands, precious ores buried in majestic mountains, and wildlife everywhere, from <laughs> sea to shining sea. Canada and the United States share another unique quality. They're immigrant nations, destinations for people around the world who long for political freedoms, economic opportunity, and a long tradition of compassion. Our two nations have the largest trading relationship in the world. One and a half billion dollars transacted every day. The two-way trade at the Ambassador Bridge between Detroit and Windsor alone equals all American exports to Japan. Wow. And we're so comfortable as neighbors. 200 million, 200 million people across the common border every year. Canada, some may be surprised to learn, is America's largest oil supplier and the United States is Canada's number one tourist destination. I miss Vegas. In a snapshot, Canada is a huge country, second largest in the world next to Russia, but its population is only about a tenth the size of the United States, 34 million, split into 10 provinces and three territories. 90% of Canadians live within 100 miles of the U.S. border, residing in world-class cities, thriving farms and smaller towns. That looks like Seattle. <laughs> with good reason. Life in the Canadian North is only for the party. It is remote and oh so cold. The coldest day ever recorded in North America occurred in 1947 in Snag, Yukon. Minus 81 degrees, not including wind chill. Oh, you need your long johns for that. Yeah. yeah. Jesse the Sponge. Canadians are so generous, they share with us their brightest stars and music comedy, acting, sports, and journalism. And if you're in a fight, you want the Canadians on your side. They were in World War II before we were. They were there on D-Day, in the air and on the beaches. They've been America's most reliable partners in Afghanistan, and it's been costly and painful. Now, when Canada loses a warrior in that distant land, the nation pauses Highly and heroes. honors the fallen yep. along what is called the Highway of Heroes outside of Toronto. Even their diplomats have been there for us. In 1980, a year before the conclusion of the Iranian hostage crisis, six American embassy personnel would escape from Iran in an operation organized by Canadian Ambassador Ken Taylor. The Which United was made States into a movie, I believe. Canada yeah, for our rescue. Yep. Yeah. Those six American diplomats from Iran. Taylor hid the Americans after the U.S. Embassy was stormed, created fake Canadian passports, 
then flew the Americans out of Tehran with a bogus cover story. The six in disguise as a mob-looking Hollywood film crew allegedly researching a prospective sci-fi flick. Now, all these years later, Taylor has admitted he was formally working for the CIA. And if the Iranians had discovered he was an American spy, he would have been in big, big trouble. Hmm. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> Got your back, America. In our darkest hours, Canada has been with us. On September 11th, as the United States shut down its airspace, Canada instituted Operation Yellow Ribbon, landing 239 U.S.-bound flights with 33,000 passengers at 17 different Canadian airports. And then, amid the uncertainty that followed, entire communities housed and fed those thousands of passengers for days afterward. Another movie. <laughs> In the long history of sovereign neighbors, there never has been a relationship as close, productive, and peaceful as the U.S. and Canada. We share a continent and so much more. Speaking before the Canadian Parliament, President Kennedy summarized the relationship this way. Geography has made us neighbors. History has made us friends. Economic has made us partners. And necessity has made us allies. Those who nature have so joined together, said Kennedy, let no man put us under. Of course, there are some distinct differences in the culture. The American fans of these games will be unfurling the stars and stripes at every opportunity and chanting USA, USA. The Canadian Prime Minister had to go before Parliament yesterday and urge Canadians to engage in what he called an uncharacteristic outburst of patriotism. So <laughs> don't be afraid to wave those flags. We'll apologize to the world for our immodesty later. So that's a big difference now. He hopes he has to do it very often. You know what struck me in that piece among, among all of the items? There are more people in California than there are in all of Canada. Yep. Well, yep. And Canada has a stronger and more sound economy at this point as well. That's a distinct difference between the two. <laughs> <laughs> so 2010, so yeah, the Vancouver Olympics. Yeah, yeah, sounds, sounds about right. That was cool. That was cool. Yeah. That was cool. It was like, uh, Choked up a little when I see like the you know the 911 thing. With yeah, the, they made a musical out of that. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. the musical called again? I, I can't remember when you said it. Yeah, but oh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they made they a did. musical, they out, made of a musical yeah. out of that. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's cool and uh, yeah. Come from away. Come yeah, from, I come think. From away? Yeah, I, I think, think that's that it. it. I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. But um, it's it's interesting how they uh, they talk about the War of 1812 because we did a video uh, comparing Canada to U.S. Yes. And I think we made a comment. About how Canada won the War of 1812. We might have made that yeah, comment. Yeah. We, we did make that comment, and, and it clearly obviously points out that the British were the ones that did it. But, I mean, it was still us. It's Canada. We, it's Canada. <laughs> you know, we came Just from saying. that. Land. Just saying. So, anyways, but we do appreciate the clarification that everyone provides us in the videos because, let's be honest, me and Ryan, we don't like, you know, do our fact checks and everything when we start up the show. Who's got time for fact checks? <laughs> Who's got time for that? So we expect you guys to uh, set us straight when we say something that's completely untrue. And uh, we're, we, we love that response, so keep them coming. But uh, yeah, it was really nice seeing that patriotic uh, bow to each, each other's country and mm -hmm. uh, America. We love you and we're here for you anytime and uh, we're glad that, to know that the same goes for you guys too. Yeah, let's get that border opened up. Yeah, here. we do. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the gates are closed like, right now. There it is. It's like, yeah. and maybe gates be open for all time. It's like, well, that's yeah, an so, age well. So, for context, those that don't know, the Canada and US border is currently closed to like unnecessary travel and only only like trucks and stuff. So, yeah. that's been closed for they, at least a year. They only let now. you into Canada if you say please. So, yeah. <laughs> when we say sorry, you can't. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's crazy that's been over a year since uh, I know. we haven't crossed out to the states so we really want to get back to the states and, and just travel the world for that matter so yeah like I said we're gonna do a cross Canada tour and uh, maybe to some other countries uh, the two neighbors tour be very cool very That'd exciting be very cool so guys thank you very much for joining us today uh, if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel two neighbors and please send us some requests hashtag my request down below in the comment section with the URL link and don't forget to check out okanaswag.com and punch in two neighbors uh, in the coupon code and you'll receive 20% off plus free shipping and pay no tax on your whole order now shipping in Canada and the USA.
It's my favorite. <laughs> uh, Ryan, what else should these lovely people do? Well guys, if you haven't done so, like, share, and subscribe. When you hit that subscribe button, make sure you turn on that bell for notifications. We post new content every single day. We don't want you to miss it. Thank you again, Michael Burns, for your awesome hashtag my request. We really enjoyed that one. That's it for our show today, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time. Later, guys.